Hello again. Right, postman has been again today. And I've got a few extra bits for the Traxxas Summit VXL. So what have we got in the box? Right, so as I mentioned on the last video, um, this servo that comes installed in the Traxxas, this tiny cute little blue servo here, these are micro sized servos, uh, 13 or 14 millimeters wide, kind of uh, aviation, generally used in airplanes and hel helicopters from what I've been uh, seeing recently, not that I've ever had to consider servos this small before. But being the 116 size it is, it has uh, little tiny servos. So, the one that comes in the Traxxas is apparently strong enough, but in terms of torque, but the plastic gearing is uh, likely to strip with a certain amount of abuse. And also, I've heard some varying things about the electrics in it not being that reliable as well. I have also heard other people saying that it's that's all a load of rubbish and they're just not setting the car up properly. But um, I was just a bit wary of it, having seen so many reports of um, the servos becoming useless almost as soon as they've opened the car and opened the box and had to go on the car. So before running this, I haven't actually run it yet, I did a bit of research and uh, looked into replacement servos. Now there was a couple of recommendations, two or three, uh, Savox, um, High Tech, um, and uh, there's a Bluebird Turnigy servo. It's either labelled Bluebird or Turnigy, but I think it's the same one. Um, those those three roughly costing all about £20 or slightly more each online. Um, seemed like quite a lot to spend, seeing as I've already forked out for this kit, which should have been ready to run. Um, I thought I'd spend a bit longer looking for maybe slightly better value servo and my searches came up with this Corona so I believe it's made in Japan <clears throat> but it seems to be marketed in Germany mostly this servo I might be wrong there but um, that's just what I the, the uh, the idea I got from the little bit of online searching I did, that's the impression I got. Um, I got this uh, Hobby King, which has a UK outlet, so I got it in a, in a day after ordering it. They have quite steep delivery charges, especially if you just want to buy one small object like this. And I did look ravenously through their site for anything else that I needed, but I couldn't find anything, so I had to pay five quid for the delivery of this box which is about one and a half by two inches in size and um, let's get inside it so a little bag of parts there, little tiny servo parts and there's the servo um, this is a DS238MG. Now the writing on there is too small, I'm not going to bother trying to focus on that with the camera. Um, it's got metal gears and it apparently has at least one bearing inside there. Um, and it should drop straight in there in place of the Traxxas servo. So I'll be doing that today. Um, it's got slightly higher torque rating than the Traxxas. I think the Traxxas is about three at six volts it was about three kilograms per centimeter. Um, this one is rated at least about four and a sorry four kilograms per centimeter might be might be a little bit off there, could be slightly more than four, somewhere between four and four and a half kilograms per centimetre. So it's um, 
a bit stronger. Um, but the extra the extra torque wasn't really what I was looking for. It's the uh, the metal gears is probably the main thing. Um, so I'll put a link to that in the uh, video information if you want to have a look at where you can buy that. Um, Hobby King was the cheapest place I found it and probably as far as I can remember it was the only place I found it. Um, so that's that. The other thing I got was the wheelie bar. Now this is the wheelie bar that fits on either the Revo or the Summit. I ordered this from the US. I'll put a link to that as well. Um, had a quick look from UK vendors, couldn't find anyone that had it in stock. Found a, a place on a seller on eBay that was selling it for a good price, including freight to the UK. The price was still pretty good. So let's get in this, shall we? It's completely sealed. Drop those little screws. So there we go. Not much to it really. <laughs> but right, let's see, how does this get on? I'm guessing it screws on either these two bolts here. That looks like the most likely place, or maybe it's where some something involved with uh, the bumper fastenings as well. But um, I'll be working that out today as well. <clears throat> so that will go on there. And I, from the videos I saw of this thing running, I kind of decided a wheelie bar was uh, close to essential <laughs> because it's liable to wheelie at any time. Especially if you've got a bit more power in there, running two batteries uh, or LiPo, what have you. So I will be fitting that on, and you'll see that again later on. And I've got another battery. I'll put a link to uh, the seller of this. It was another eBay, another guy on eBay, UK based. I think it was uh, 13 or 14 pounds. Um, these are just sub C sized NIM packs, so you could theoretically use any sub C sized NIMPAC um, from any vendor I've, because I've already got a 1200 that came with the car I wanted to get at least one other to match up for running in uh, parallel so I've got another one of these and if I do get some more batteries for this car I found a good few um, higher output batteries from third parties about the still sub C cell size packs, obviously, same configuration as this stick pack. But uh, I found some in 1600 as opposed to the 12 that this one is, and a couple, I think, a couple bit higher as well, maybe 18 or 2000 as well. So if I do get more batteries for this, which I may not need because I apparently have read it's going to give me 20 to 30 minutes of life running these two in parallel. Which is probably going to be enough for a day's running for me on this car. Um, I will, so I'll learn to drive it with these 1200 packs in parallel. So it's not going massively fast and jumping and rolling and wheeling every possible opportunity, which is what it seems to do, unless you severely alter the ride height. Which you don't want to do on rough ground, obviously. Fine for um, for level ground. In fact, I would say with this car, you're definitely going to want to lower it a little bit for uh, tarmac asphalt running. It's, it's going to give you better handling speed, and it's not going to keep flipping and rolling and weeding too much, which will probably become a massive pain in the ass unless you've got someone who's prepared to run after it for you all the time to pick it up again. And. Last but not least, I just thought I'd shove this in on the video as well. Nothing to do with this car in particular, but it's just a nice little... Uh, let's open the back here. Allen wrench set. Um, 
You've got four of the most standard sized Allen wrench bits here. They fit in the handle, as you just saw. And uh, fit quite nicely in there. So no more horrible L-shaped Allen wrenches to deal with. Which usually, they bend, they're cheaply made, they, uh, they burr around the edges and don't work anymore. So this feels, this is nicely milled aluminium handle here, feels nice and sturdy, well made. And you've got some very solid hardened steel looking allen key bits to go in there as well. So yeah, that's Fast Tracks, I'll put a little link to that somewhere in the comments if you want to have a look for one of those as well. So until next time, thank you for watching.